Megan Hicks of I Run Far. I'm with Ruth Croft after her second place finish at the 2021 Western States 100. Hi. Hi, how are you? <laughs> the question is, how are you? I feel like in one day I've aged my body like at least 10 years. <laughs> how old are you feeling at this exact moment? Probably over 40, easily. <laughs> All right. So you have finished your first 100 miler. Yeah. Have you finished your only 100 miler? Possibly at this moment. <laughs> Maybe if you ask me in a week, it might be a bit different. But yeah, I'm pretty firm on not doing too many 100 milers. Yeah. Um, we walked over here into the shade to do this interview. And as we were walking, you're saying that this race took a big toll on your body. Yeah, I think it takes a massive toll on everyone's. But I just, yeah, just how I'm feeling, the fatigue, my stomach, like... I don't want to be in this state, like, very often. Yeah, because I just don't think it's very good for your overall health as a human being. <laughs> How is this healthy? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was questioning yesterday. <laughs> All right, so let's back things up to that beautiful, calm, cool starting line uh, yeah. back up in Olympic Valley yesterday morning. How did you feel when the race started? Um, I was pretty relaxed, to be honest, and like the goal was not to go out too hard. So I just, I was running with Brittany for a while, um, and yeah, there was a lead pack of girls that went ahead, um, and I just kind of stuck with Brittany. We had like Patrick Regan just in front of us, and I was like, I really don't need to be ahead of him <laughs> on this climb. <laughs> Given where he finished last time at this race? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but still, I was just like, um, and then... Uh, yeah, I ran quite a bit with Brittany and then Emily Hallgood coming into Duncan Canyon. And like both of them have done 100 milers before. Brett, obviously, she knows Western States. And they're both coached by Paul. So I have a lot of respect for Paul. So I knew that like they know how to approach Western States. So if I sat with them, I thought it'd be a good place to start. Um, was it hard to be that patient, though? Because you, you race a lot of short distance races where the action starts like... Uh, pretty quick. Yeah, but I just knew it's like 100 miles is such a long way <laughs> and I could not afford to go out and then just have a massive like suffer fest. Like I wanted to be conservative because I think otherwise, yeah, it would just be a really long day out. So was it, are you saying it was like kind of easy to shut off like that short distance racing part of your brain? Yeah, you just have to. Mm. Like it's not sustainable to go to approach it like I would a shorter <laughs> race. So yeah, it was for me it was, I thought it was going to be harder, but to be honest, like I felt that those girls at the front of the pack went out a bit hot. So I was hoping that they would kind of cause some carnage up front and then we could come up from behind. <laughs> Which is kind of exactly what happened ultimately. Yeah, it did, yeah, eventually. Um, did, we saw you and Brittany Peterson together at a couple different aid stations. Were you guys working together for a real long time or was that just coincidental? Um, we were kind of checking in with each other and Brett had said that she felt that the pace was quite hot. Um, and I also knew, I think I'd looked up Ali's like that first aid station, the time she'd got in, it was like 1.45, an hour 45. And we got in at an hour 52. And so I was like, did not want to be any faster than that. Um, and so Brett was saying it was a bit hot. And so I was like, we kind of, we weren't pushing it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, when did the heat come? Like it felt like it came early. Um, yeah, it did. But I also think like that's what Western States is about. Like mm. it's just about your management throughout the day. Like it's about making sure you don't blow out your quads, making sure you stay on top of your nutrition and just making sure at the aid stations you're getting plenty of ice on board and just getting wet as possible. So yeah, I think it did come early, but also we just there's just so many aid stations that you have <laughs> like chances to cool your body down if you have the right like cooling techniques and that. I think you really experience like sort of the grandiosity of the American hundred mile experience, <laughs> yeah. like aid stations every hour, yeah. lots of ice. Yeah. <laughs> like five pounds of ice each and I'd said to my crew, like if you forget something in aid station, I'm not gonna like get dehydration <laughs> or starve out there, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> You're not going to starve on the Western no, States. definitely course. not. Like, I think I heard Eric Sinsman had, like, a quesadilla down at Cow Road, so. Like, Just stop it in at the food truck. Yeah. Get what you want. The next one will be Starbucks. Yeah. Seriously. Get your evening cappuccino. <laughs> Did, um, was there ever a switch to, like, okay, now I'm really racing, or... Was it just management, management, management all day? Um, it was pretty much like 
get to Forest Hill, don't blow your quads out, and then start getting moving there. Um, that's when I picked up Alex Varner, and that was super refreshing, and he just kind of like <laughs> talked my ear off. So I forgot I was even running 100 miles. He's like a radio station <laughs> you can tune into. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, tell me if you want me to shut up. I'm like, no, you're good. <laughs> Do I need to participate, though? Yeah, yeah. It was just a lot of, uh-uh, okay, nods. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and then I just went for a really kind of a bad patch because it's still, like, everyone says it, it's quite hot till Forest Hill, but it's still super hot down to the river, and there's a lot of sections where it's um, quite exposed. And so I kind of had a rough, rough patch going into Rocky Chucky. Mm. Um, but then I was still able to get moving, so it was good. Um, when did you move into second place position exactly? Um, I passed Ragna coming into the Auburn Lakes Trail. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, how were you feeling? Were you feeling like I'm gonna hunt who's in front of me? I'm gonna mm. run from who's behind me, or I'm just gonna survive this? Um, I was kind of just focusing on what was in front of me. I okay. think I knew Beth was just a bit out of reach, um, and so then yeah, I was just trying to like keep eating and keep moving forward, and just not worry about what's happening behind me. I'm just hoping that I was able to yeah get a bit of a pace on Ragnar, um, a gap I mean on Ragnar. But yeah. Um, Going into, I found out at the end she was only yeah three or four minutes behind me at Pointed Rocks, which isn't much. And then I was worried actually about Brittany because I thought she was going to do what she did to Claire Gallagher, which is not what I wanted. <laughs> and I was like, and then she'd probably turn off a head torch as well, and like we wouldn't even know she was behind us until she was there. <laughs> I know. So you're kind of running scared, um, but also I was not moving well on the descents. Like I was moving faster on the flats than oh. the downhills. I was starting to hurt by the end. Yeah. Um. What was it like to, yeah, do that really cool final mile finish of this race and come onto the track and put 100 miles behind you? Yeah, it's awesome. Like, because going into it, it's just pretty daunting. Like, it's a long way. Um, but just the whole day, just the atmosphere out there and just to get the full Western States experience was, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, finishing in the top 10 of this race, finishing in second place affords you with an yeah. Automatic entry to 2022. Yeah. So should we not talk about that? No, we don't need to go there yet. <laughs> That's not really good right now, Megan. No. Um, are you continuing your adventures in America after the race? Um, I'm actually going to Costa Rica for a few weeks. Oh. Leave on Tuesday, uh, non-running holiday. Okay. Um, and then I'll head over to Europe and the back half of the season. I am signed up for CCC, but I'm also yeah, kind of aware that this has probably taken a massive toll and don't want to go into it if my mind or body's not in the right space for it. Yeah. I feel like Costa Rica recovery could be a really oh, okay. good way to speed speed recovery up. Yeah, because I felt if I went straight to Europe, I'd be probably tempted by yeah. the mountains to just do way too much running too soon. So it was kind of a strategical holiday. <laughs> um, now you'll be tempted by the water and rum. Yeah, which is a way better alternative <laughs> than Amazing. mountains right now. <laughs> Amazing. Well, it was really fun to watch you take yeah. a hit at your first 100-mile race, and it was um, really fun to watch you like hit it out of the park. Yeah, well, thanks, and thanks for all your coverage as well. I know like my family and friends back in New Zealand really appreciated it. Refresh, refresh, refresh. Yeah. 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 Congrats to you, Ruth. Thanks, Megan.